Hello everybody, oh my god we're starting with the pitch invasion. Welcome to the round of 32, Chaos Mirror, Gestionador versus Mankiz. Uh, yeah, both Chaos, both big TV Chaos kill teams. Um, we've got, oh god, what's this, two bribes, two bibs, and an apothecary. No wizard for Gestionador, and uh, nothing for Mankiz, and... Yeah, so he's, he's got a massive TV advantage. Really good team, and with me in the booth is Purple Chest and Muppet Pac-Man. Hello, hello. Hello there. Hello. Uh, I've also noticed this fan favourite Chaos Warrior on Gaston Doors team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, though he did seem to help on the uh, kickoff event. <laughs> no, he got smashed a bit, didn't he? The fans were not impressed. It was only a one, it was only a plus one. Now this is a, a fascinating little insight here into one of the strengths and weaknesses of this setup. Um, we've gone with the uh, with withdrawn defense here, haven't we? Um, trying to stay back out of blitz range with the majority of the team and just leaving three scrubs on the line. Mm. Um, but of course the uh, the pitch invasion has taken uh, a massive six of the eight withdrawn players down and stunned them. Which of course means not only are they out for this turn, the reaction turn one, but also Turn two, they will uh, they will be getting up, but um, somewhat slowly. So there is chance now to attack this backfield if he chooses to. But it looks like he's staying and monstering the line of scrimmage. Yeah, well, I mean, of course, he does have four down himself, but they come back next turn, so that's um, a lot quicker. Mm. It's a nice team, isn't it, for Mankis here with the. Uh... Yeah, very nice. And being so far back as well, it means he's not getting any hits of his own in, so he's not going to win the attrition back here, is he? No, I mean, the, the wrestle piece can come and do some wrestling if it wants, but uh, I, I imagine the, uh, yeah, I imagine they're just staying back and waiting for the other stunts. Yeah. yeah, so Gestionador, however the hell you meant to pronounce it, has just gone for the fight here, hasn't he? Two yeah. bribes, an apple, and two bibs. I mean... I think that's crazy. He could have gone. He could have gone for the apple, one bribe, one babe, and a wizard. I think that's a million times better. But it's not what he's done. <laughs> he's got two I, I mean, bribes. I, I'm with you, bibs. Jim. You know, I love inducement strategies, and I think this is not one I would support. But it's it, you know, there's a route through using these, isn't there? Yeah. You know, the bribes say I will file uh, foul every time you pile on, and I'm in range because you know. Got, I can afford, I've got two on the bench and I'm going to lose them through Claw Pom, so I may as well lose them while taking Claw Pommers out. Yeah. Um, the Apothem Babes are about existing and surviving and of course Beasts with AV8 do go off the field a lot more than people realise. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't in my heart say I think this is a winning strategy but I can see how it could win. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I think the two bribes are the thing I hate the most, like, especially since you've lost the kickoff, like, you're not on offence. You could be down players on your offence and then you're not fouling at all. I mean, I'd be quite happy to swap one bribe and a babe for the Wiz there. Yeah. I think yeah. Wiz is going to yeah. be huge. Yeah, for sure. Either lightning on that evil ball carrier um, who's already gone and fetched the ball. He's uh, agility four. And, uh, I know he's got a plus move, but uh, what it doesn't show is that he's also minus move. Yeah. Because the BB2 clan only shows stat up, not stat down. So he is still move six, so don't get confused by that, uh, that plus move symbol on the ball carrier. But he is AG4, uh, he is blodge, and he does have sure hands. So he's um, he's a nice little ball carrier as is. <laughs> yeah, man, because yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, bribes are good if it goes well, but. Um... Yeah, yeah they're a classic yeah. high roll strategy, aren't they? Yeah. And you can understand, like, but I, would, I still just like the, the wizard's just so good, though, right? It's just so good. It is. But you can you can see the point of just stay back. I would I wouldn't have even minded not even standing people up there, to be honest. I would have just it, I mean, it's, well, just give up the first half entirely. Yeah, yeah so, just right, we'll, we'll, we'll start playing at turn nine. Yeah, he's got three people laid down on the LOS already. He's got six yep. players there. He's got, you know, just just keep your yeah. two and then go right. Let's just go to the second half. I'll get two LOS hits, two gang fouls, and yes. uh, let's go. And then we'll, we'll start properly in turn nine after those eight hits. And as you said, with fouls following up if needs be. Yeah. It's not the worst thing I've ever heard, Jim. 
I mean, particularly as uh, you know, what's missing here with the Wiz, of course, is that Mankis can keep his team really, really compact. Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't that psychological tool making him spread them out a bit in case a fireball comes. Yeah, like that's literally it. With without the without the wizard, that that seems that gets a lot more um, appeal, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, hence he's able to pack up around these three scrubs on the line of scrimmage, giving them no options to escape, mm. and not fear that you know because of the withdrawn defence, not fear that the pieces at the front are going to get claw pumped, and not fear that a wizard's going to take out you know five or six pieces at once. It's it's a strange choice. But this is a bit of a strange choice by Mankis, isn't he? He's blitzed up, the, blitzed up there and his, uh, his claw mighty warrior here. Mighty exposed. There's something to notice. It's uh, the claw palm on the uh, guest you know doors team is on a case for you, not a beastman. There's nothing Just wrong in passing. That. Thank you very much for the follow, Bakers. <laughs> <laughs> I I like Clawpon Warriors. I'll be honest with you. I like them. I really, like Jim? Yep. You've been quite quiet about that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> that hidden, haven't you? I like them. <laughs> yeah, his his I mean, beasts just seem pretty weak compared to Mankey's. Even I don't dislike them. Yeah, uh, and I famously don't. I'm not a huge lover of the claw pom. Yeah. I mean, in the main, I would still rather claw pom with a beast, and then have my chaos warriors block, guard, claw, mighty blow, and stand for. Yeah. Uh, but I don't hate it because the AV9 uh, means that fouling back is, is quite tricky to do. Yeah. Um, I, I probably wouldn't ever have more than one, but I know you like a couple, don't you? And then a couple of, uh, of more, perhaps. Uh, uh, to be honest, I kind of like one, and then one right. anti-elf, uh, one anti-elf yeah. chaos warrior, and then two like boring guard guys. Um, that's what I prefer the most. But obviously in CCL, you mostly don't need the anti-elf guys. So you might as well just have two claw pommers. Yeah, no, I mean I, I like that build um, a lot more. You know the two. Two towers of power, an elf hitter, a general hitter, and then probably a rowdy beast hitter as well. Yeah. For that extra move and things. Well, so far it doesn't look like a, a bash on bash fight, does it? <laughs> no. No, I mean, we're elf walling up in front of this chaos team, which I don't hate. I mean, as Jim says, if we can pretty much not play in this first half, even if we go 1 0 down, we've got those eight beautiful hits coming before we start our drive. But um, and if problem... we keep our drives and our players intact till then, I think we're probably in a good position. The problem with this, though, right, is the players he wants to export. One of the players he wants exposed is his fucking dirty player, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to claw. He doesn't want to worry of getting claw pong. No, I mean, and I think if that was this was the plan, then maybe not bringing the dirty player on this half. But mm. I mean, you he can still foul with a rookie yeah. on a claw pommer, but. He has a god guy kept off. Yeah, that's weird. It's well, got too yeah. many good players, really. That's his problem. <laughs> I mean, the god guy could have came on for this rookie beastman, maybe. Yeah, but then it would have been up on the line of scrimmage, and you know, he no, thought no, those would be deleted. This oh, one okay, yeah. I think yeah. it's okay having some bad players because you, you need to you need to screen your good players with your bad players, don't you? That's the thing. It's or, or just like concede the half, like the 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 way the inducements that he's picked is basically saying I'm just going to concede the half. I'm surprised he's playing it properly. If you're I would have more it done properly, it after the, the long uh, game, after the pitch invasion. I would have definitely done it. Just stay on the ground and move those two players that survived back. Yeah, there's no reason they couldn't have done some sniping around the edge till they get knocked over, and then just don't stand there. Yeah. No, I mean, he has managed reasonable defense of most of his better pieces this time. There's the Chaos Warrior um, that provided the assist. That is vulnerable. Yeah. But other than that, we've got uh, a Wrestle Beast, a Guard Beast, and a Naked Beast defending the uh, the four players he seems to care about. So it's, it's a reasonably good shape. But the problem is with so few poor players, as Jim says, to screen. You can easily see that being great this turn, but perhaps not so great even by next turn. Yeah. You know, a stun or a removal on any of those uh, those scum pieces that are, are keeping all the others safe. 
and suddenly you haven't got a screen left. And of course we can stay tight and punchy as we've discussed without the wizard you know, threatening that shape as a bad shape. Instant greed. Yeah, I think he's sus that he's, he's not going to need his rerolls for um, <laughs> defending his ball here, so he can use them to hit. Yep. He has four of them. Why not four of them? No, we're not that long on time. Uh, we've still got we've only got four turns after this to make it over the line. It's still a moderate way away if we don't get some removals. So. Oh yeah, I wasn't criticising it at all. I was just commenting that it was instant. <laughs> Yeah, he did it against me as well when we played him on the first round. Like the first hit was a reroll. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean, Arrested Development is uh, is very passionate about this. He hates anyone that pauses when blocking because before the block, you should have either decided if it's a reroll or decided it isn't a reroll. <laughs> um, which I think is not true, but it, it's a view. Yeah, I also think it's not true as well. I usually think for about like pushes and stuff, but I don't usually count double scores. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> when it happens. Yeah, pe people. Do you know what? Do you know what really pisses me off is this fucking 15 second timer. And again, yeah, people are like that with their dev saying you should know. Well, if you know you're gonna blitz with that with a player, it doesn't matter if you know whether you're gonna reroll or not, right? If you if you're gonna yeah. make this blitz, you make the blitz, and then you should have. The rest of your three minutes turn to, to think about whether to reroll. You shouldn't have to think for three minutes whether you're going to reroll or not, on the off chance that you're one in nine or one in thirty-six. <laughs> yeah, I mean sometimes that fifteen seconds is the most vital of the turn. You're absolutely right, Jim. I mean if it even if it works, let alone if it fails, you know then there's the difference between a stun or a takeout or not breaking armor, and suddenly the whole of the rest of your turn might need to be replanned. Let alone if it was a one in nine or a push. Mm. Um, so quite often those seconds I'm thinking not am I re-rolling this but all right I am re-rolling it what's my priority straight afterwards because now I won't have a re-roll left yeah so like so I, it's using the time for things like that yeah so like I hate that like you know if you if you think about like you know you, if you're just definitely going to make a blitz but you know you might have to re-roll it on a on a one in nine yeah yeah so if it takes you thirty seconds to decide. <laughs> you don't have that. You can't because you, you can't do it in fifteen seconds. Or you, you, you know, as a dev says, you should be doing it first. That's four and a half minutes you've spent <laughs> instead of thirty seconds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it just pisses me off that, that you've there's no other choice with this client. It's stupid. <laughs> it's so, a design uh, choice, Jim. Yeah. Just not not one you support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Who can stupid. say if it's right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it can help sides. new players. I mean, it helps me. I abuse the timers like crazy. <laughs> but, um, uh, it helps both fits, are But there are other times when, yes, they're not ideal because it, you should have longer for those decisions if you want them not best. Time. Yeah. Yeah, there's 13 players on each team. So. Now, we're in quite a decent position here. I mean, I think from both sides, I'm not sure Mankis is going to be unhappy with where his team is and the ball is. Um, but I actually think for Cristiano Del, this has gone quite well so far. It has, yeah. It's got a nice defensive shape up in front of the ball. As I said, we're halfway through this half and uh, nothing has collapsed yet. In fact, the exact opposite. Considering that pitch invasion, I thought there was a chance to make some real progress down the pitch. We didn't. We decided we were going to stay around the three line of scrimmage. We didn't manage to take any of those out. Um, and the kick was good enough where yet to waste a few turns to come up the pitch. Yeah, I I think this has lacked some urgency from Mankis a little bit. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's very good with the chaos. There's still time to solve this, but now it's now it needs solving. Whereas it could have, I felt, been a bit of a walk in the park if you'd taken advantage of the pitch invasion. He's le I think he's left this side a bit too yeah. open. Well, he didn't have many players left to close it. No, but I think he could have left the centre more open, or left yeah. the, the flank more open. I think he definitely left. Like, you know, he left our left side. He could have left our left side more open. Yep. Or he could have left the centre more open. I just think. Of the two, Jim, I would always leave the centre open. Um, yeah. And not just because with dwarves you lack the movement, but with any team, if they pour down through a central hole. 
you're much more likely to be able to fold in on them from both sides. Indeed. And yeah. also that's where my downed players are, so they can get up and get yes. relevant to anything moving down the middle just by standing up. Yes, yeah. Yeah, they're not they're stopped by one here. player just standing above them. Yeah, so yes, I think the two that were holding the central area um, could have been holding the right as we're looking at it. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot more. And then given up the centre a little bit, but still with those dead bodies, it's not easy to come piling through the middle. Sorry, the downed bodies. Yeah. As I said, if you're not careful with them, they stand up into really bad positions for you. So yeah. I felt that was stronger. As it is, I mean, the, the flank switch is going to take some time. It's not going to be complete this turn. And some of the downed pieces are still going to be a little relevant. Um, it's going to have to be perhaps a go for it to get out of any base contact. I think there is going to be a go for it. And won't he be happy that there's not a wizard to punish him here? <laughs> yes, well, let it go, Jim. I mean, there isn't. There should be. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Um, but there isn't. It's just the best inducement, isn't it, out of everything? Well, I mean, it, yes. Yes. Which is probably why the lightning bolt has been nerfed. Um, and instead we have the terribly amusing frog bolt. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's not even about the power of the wizard to me. It's the psychological impact it has. Ev the opponent every turn has to think, right, what am I doing about the wizard? Yeah. What if the wizard comes this turn? What would he whiz? How do I stay safe against him? Yeah, and just that it? added factor can lead to other mistakes, can lead to other you know, gaps to get through. And it just puts more pressure on them, and that's always good. Yep. Good evening, thick of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing I always ask myself about um, whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm coaching. Not only am I solving the problems they're setting for me, but what problems am I setting them? What am I making them think about? And sometimes you're so busy reacting that you're not. You know, you suddenly they take their turn, and you realise they're not reacting to anything. They're just choosing options. Mm. It's funny, I've always been reactive in like, you know, any any Games Workshop game, whether it's been, you know, Warhammer or 40k or any any of sure. these things, I'm always I always like just being the reactive player. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Magic. Yeah, I mean I, I, I don't mind reacting. I, I think I come up with creative solutions, I flatter myself, but I still think I'm going to be in a better position if I've made them solve a problem or two first. Yeah, but I mean, you, you do that naturally anyway, yeah, don't you, by yeah, reacting? Yeah, it's not... But, like I said, the wizard is a constant problem until it's used. Yeah. That and is not. A, and then it can be anything. a massive problem as you run away with your yes, little dwarf. Yes, <laughs> as my godlike fireball the other night proved. Yeah. Fire descended from the heavens and won me the game. Uh, that is not a monkey's fan favourite, that's a Gaston Door fan favourite. Yes. And the reason why he has it is he won CCL one time, um, but I don't remember at all. And, <laughs> and he has kept it for, you know, several seasons, I don't know how many. Um, if you play 30 games or something, you get to keep it on your team. And he's kept it on his team. I really like putting that player in contact with this beast man. And he has yes. not. He has not done that. I liked a bit more contact this turn. I don't know, but especially that one, I think. Yeah. We, we talked before about there are times to do some marking, even against Glorpom, and I felt this was a turn where if you don't arrest them here, they're scoring. Yeah. And if you do create oh. enough problems, they may well not be. Well, he did. <laughs> he started turning and put that guy where, where the <laughs> dirty player could have just been. <laughs> Yeah, but he wants the dirty player safe, Jim. I know he does. I he has been he protecting him like he's a main player. And he, he's got the re-rolls that if that all went wrong, he could have thrown one in. He's still got yeah. three re-rolls, Troy. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. Oh my god, four plus. He got stuck he's got to go for the three as well now, hasn't he? And then he really shows yeah. that side up. You, you absolutely can't stay on the... Uh, this looks beautiful on the claw once you've done the first dodge. Oh. Yeah. And if this works, the shape's really nice. Yeah, with a reroll. He goes the reroll. Yeah, if if you use the reroll to make the first one, fine. But with with the reroll, he has to make the second one, doesn't he? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, of course, that's. No, he could have gone an extra square. I would have gone one square to the right of there. I, I would have done as well. Yeah. But now he's getting the switch back, isn't he? Here. Uh, yeah, case. and I mean it's not it's not a weak space. It's fine. I just felt one space to the right was slightly stronger. 
But yes, it has slightly weakened the left flank as we're looking at it. And there is a route through there, but it, it, it's going to take some doing. And these stand-ups on the LS have stopped these two players from coming back with the ball to the yep. left. And again, if you'd waited on moving, like if you'd moved that dirty player in first, then he would have had a player outside the other way making it, you know, that much stronger, wouldn't he, basically? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I understand him keeping the dirty player safe, but the dirty player in the rest of the square and the wrestler out the other side is a much, much stronger shape and still leaves that claw piece free at the back to, you know, to recover and to deal with whichever side gets the pressure. Mm. However, we're not seeing a, an urgent move forward from Mankis here. Surprised he didn't, I'm surprised he didn't agree that, so he must be planning the GFI. He must be, because he's trying to keep his re-rolls dry, that's the only answer, Jim. And yeah. With three re-rolls in three turns, that is probably his, uh, his only hit. Yeah. So yeah, there must be some. Yeah, he is. He's screening off this entire side and then running through. Isn't he? Yeah. So the ball doesn't need to go for it. It's, I mean, this it just dodges at the end. Either. Or GFI's dodges. Yeah, something. <laughs> I mean, you can't get anyone else in front. So this is. That was, a, that was a prime greed re-roll hit, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was, yeah. Even a stun there would have been really, really nice. Mm. But of course, you know, a 1 in 36 would have uh, been very bad. Yes. <laughs> Although the ball was reasonably defended, so it just would have meant a really, really urgent turn 7. But... The ball is in security! And I would have just like more expected it because of the previous turns as well, rather than just like this yeah. is an auto re-roll. Yeah. It was the fact if you're going to re-roll earlier when you're making a random blitz, then why not now? <laughs> See, there there is this the GFI. GFI. There is the GFI. There was his plan. Snakes, of course it does. <laughs> wow. Well, I. I mean, we smash this beastman at the front of this drive to pieces and we get loads of pieces in front, don't we, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we just base up as much as we can. Am I crazy? But an elf wall in front of this seems fine to me. It does, yeah. But at least you're hitting a shitter. Uh, yeah, there is that. I wouldn't have gone for that hit first. I at least used the wrestle, guys, the furthest it, away. Block this piece. Yeah, yeah. and... Yeah, use the wrestle because it's safer and he's further away. Yeah, all of that's good. Yeah, yeah, both reasons to, to go with that, yeah. Plus, there's a shitter just lying down that should have stood up already. Yes. And probably good. marked the claw pom piece that he's next to, just to keep that there. Yeah. That's all my slow guard warrior, I mean. Yeah. I think he's a little bit worried about this this guy, right? He could come down and, uh, and hit him. Please. Yeah, he can also base the um, yes the uh, the plus move stand firm beast would also be a nice piece to base. I think he might be claw pumming this 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 warrior rather than the beast man. Yeah, because he's he's a higher value target. He is, but it's much harder to then get a defence in front of the ball. Yeah. And, I, I and a both down was good on this beast. Yeah, I didn't think it was a good idea, but I thought he'd be doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I think it was better to hit the beast man and get totally... He's front pushed of him. him out of range, I guess. But he still has two yeah. turns to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he still matters. terrible back moments. <laughs> yeah. If this, if this was turn seven, that was a great play. <laughs> 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 a, almost any other turn, of course, hit the you know the claw mighty blow because you need to get those removed. But this turn, if you smash this beast, you're putting all the pressure on. You had a genuine chance just getting too much of a wall in front of this attack. Yeah. And completely ending at nil-nil at the half, which would be great. With the only real threat being this move seven guy, which yeah. has, still hasn't dealt with, so he can no, still run. No, which he hasn't dealt with and which he had options to deal with. Though. Yeah. The guard guy could still come back, but then he's got one less player. Yeah, I don't think he can afford that now. Afford. Maybe, maybe he will. I mean, I like the fact he's kept the wrestle back now. Uh, because yeah. if the ball potatoes, it, it, you know, that's a real threat. Uh, yeah, this is still alright, isn't it, to be fair? It's still alright. It's it's okay. 
it's just not brilliant <laughs> like it could have I mean the push out of range is the absolute key to why this turns okay yeah um, without that it was not great but it's it's fine now it's fine so this is the thing right he, he kind of wants to keep him in there so he can't push through the middle doesn't he but yeah. then if he puts him in, this is a bit of a problem I think this move I seven don't hate the square he's in right now yeah exactly yeah I might just click end turn and leave him there yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And he's defending that middle across. area. When you hit the beast, you don't get a ball contact on him for an assist. Yeah, he's able to respond if the uh, if the stand firm plus move piece goes out the other side on the right as we look. No, 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 I don't like that as much as where he was. No, I think that's weaker. I guess if he's dodging, he's dodging back. But no, he's still moving seven. He's still good. Because now there's a gaping hole, isn't there? Yep. <laughs> and some lovely chain options on too. Yes, yeah, I was just thinking. I was just looking at that. Thinking things. If you hit this beast first with the Chaos Warrior, and then you blitz with your Claw Palmer on the warrior nearest to them, the Blodge one. The fan favourite, yeah. Yeah, there's some lovely chains using him. Clearing off three other players to go and help form your cage afterwards. <laughs> Satterfield. <laughs> oh dear. Savage. Savage Satterfield. <laughs> Satterfield, yeah, I mean, the disadvantage of jokes like that is that I've completely owned and fessed up to how completely terrible it was and I don't care at all. <laughs> um, I also don't hold myself up as an example of a great Blood Bowl coach. I've never said I'm any good. Um, I just get lucky sometimes. <laughs> so I, it doesn't. It really doesn't bother me. I expect to fuck up almost every game. Yeah, of course. Man. And yeah, I massively fucked up that turn. But you know, it was all alright in the end. So there we are. Yeah. All that matters is the result. And even that doesn't matter. <laughs> no, even then, it's a game, Muppet. What matters is my children and my partner and my life and my income and acting and you know, even Brexit. But Blood Bowl is Blood Bowl. It's a game. So he's made the hole with a push, which was good enough. Ish, I, I preferred pushing it out instead of back like that. I didn't like yeah, the push me too. direction. Because, because I want the ball to be in front of there, so yeah. further away from it by pushing sideways is better. Yeah, and you've got this guy here, so they're like making a screen, right? Now he's just got a three push to go back. I didn't like that at all. But it feels like Mankis hasn't really chosen what he's doing this turn. Yeah, there's the blitz I was talking about. Yep. Gets the lovely pal. Yeah, I focused on it a bit. It's 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 fan favourite, and he got it by winning CCL at, in some season. And then each season, if you play thirty games with the player that has it, you get to give it to somebody next season as well. Yes, as long as that player doesn't die, if he survives the yeah. thirty games. Yeah. That's not the push I'd have done, but there we are. It's, it's also I guess not the can, push I would have done. Either. I guess he can get an extra hit and then also have... Well, exactly. Oh, I don't like that. That's, oh. Okay, that's... Oh, Jesus, what is he doing? No, I don't so like that. So instead of clearing off at least one of the Chaos Warriors, he hasn't cleared off either, yeah. which makes um, you wonder why he did that, Blitz. And if this is a push, it's just off. Yeah, I mean, if this was turn four, then those two extra hits on nice pieces would be great, but it's yeah. turn seven. Oh, those hits mean we can't those, move the chaos warrior. That means we can't move the ball safely where we want to. Those three hits, then he's taking all the hits. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that doesn't look safe. Yeah, he's got the. He's got he's, a dodge. And yeah, then... he can make it look safe, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of three pluses needed here, Jim. Yeah, I don't know how he gets the the other side sort. Yeah, I can only see one corner. It's Magic thinking. <laughs> it's, it's three plus J5 with this dirty player back here. It's called cosmic ordering, isn't it, what Noel Edmonds does? You just ask the universe for things and it says yes. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps that's the plan here. So those oh, two hits it, that yeah. he decided he wanted that one could have been just moved and the other one <laughs> could have dodged. Um, he got his two hits and he's got a KO. Yeah. So that's some value out of it, but I I mean, he's going to have to dodge off the, the piece at the back, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. He has to do that dodge and this dodge. 
And so it's a three plus, two plus to finish it. Gets the three plus. Yeah. And gets the two plus. Gets all the two fine. Plus. It's all and now fine. Now his cage is fine, and it looks very hard to stop him scoring. Uh, not that hard. Not that because... easy, Jim. It's, he's right in the middle. There's lots of ways this ball can get over the line with a couple of go for it. He's got a one D on this guy though, hasn't he? Because he's uh, he can free yeah. orc here. Now he's dodged him out. I was going to say he can just block him to uh, if he powers him, he gets the guard in there. Yeah. But now but he's blocked that, that off. It. Yeah. So Several three pluses and a two plus. That was what, three three pluses and a two plus? Two two pluses. Good. Uh... This, um, yeah. And all because he moved that guy at the end that he shouldn't have moved. Yep. <laughs> Imagine if that guy had stayed where the claw pommer is, is where he was, wasn't it? That would have completely showed everything up. Oh, we are early. We're going for injury. Wow. Yeah, we, we're not caring if he scores now. We're trying to get pieces up, aren't we? Yeah. Then we pile on, surely. Why are we not piling Because it stops the hit back, but I don't think... Actually, I think Mankis would hit back because he's also displayed a great tendency to try and bang the other team out. Which, I mean, I know for Chaos works so well. I hate the reroll, though. Once he greed rerolled, he, he had to battle. Yeah. It's just not even trying, is it? You know, you've had a 30% in to 2D the ball. That's that's not terrible, is it? No, no, and it's certainly worth going for because there's just not the time to recover it easily or well. Yeah. As I've said before, Jim, 100% of the shots you don't take will miss. Yeah. Well, it's going for the foul. That's a, that's a PC slash calcium call, that one. And if you say it in that tone of voice, people think it's wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we're no. just doing go and then score. We're disengaging, aren't we? Mankis might have to do some crazy dice here to score. Well, I mean, the, the problem is, is Mankis going to go for the hits? Yes. Uh, <laughs> the answer is yes, of course he is. Because he's chaos and chaos hit things, that's what they do. Yeah. Now the question is, does he do like some kind of chain push to get an extra hit? And the answer is he should. <laughs> yeah, if he's gonna do the hitting, then do all the hitting. Yeah. Um what would you claw palm here, Jim? Would you settle for the guard beast at the back? This rookie. I'd I would claw palm this rookie. Okay. Because I would put in that guard there, the other guy here, other guy here, run around, yeah. claw palm him, chain in into the claw of mighty to get an extra hit. Yeah, I know, I like that. Oh, look at that extra hit with got Jim. I don't hate him going for this piece. Um, you know, the dirty player does look central to Gistionador's plan, yeah. so it's not the worst blitz in the world. You might be able to make it 3D, but maybe he's not. Maybe 3D though, because there's a guard in there. And I don't hate the guard beast either, rather than the claw, because it's, it's an AB8, it's nice to take out, but you know, everything's AB7, claw, mighty blow. Defenseless. He's as well. <laughs> separating his cage so he can <laughs> dance into the end zone. <laughs> like the end zone. He hasn't fouled yet, no, Dimmy, no, but he's going to foul this turn. Because now he gets his. He did fall once, he fell to Chaos Light. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, he just literally just fell. Yeah. And just fouled because once. of the babe, he got a KO back and he won't fail on a one. <laughs> oh, we were wrong. The babe was a masterpiece. So now, three. Three claw pom hits. Well, no. One claw pom hit. Two claw mighty hits. No, he's only got one claw mighty. I went, tired. I went high there, didn't I? He's only got one claw mighty. Yeah. Yeah, one's mighty blow, no claw, just guard. Yeah, so a mighty blow hit, a claw mighty hit, a claw palm, and a massive gang foul. Interestingly, because as we all know, Chaos coaches are the most pixel huggy, um, <laughs> the claw pommer is the piece chosen to not make this short drive. Yes, of course. Just in case of a rock. Yeah. These rocks are brutal. Now, are we going to see a foul this turn? Because these are all rookie beasts, aren't they? Yes, we have two bribes, yes. 
Always yes, even if we don't take any of them out in the hitting. Yes. I mean, I I think if I could casualty at least one beast, I think I'd throw the foul. I'm not sure if I'd just knock them all over, I would. Because he's going to be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't either, but we are going to. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. okay. So it's, <laughs> yes, you think Mankis will, but you wouldn't. Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I would. I'd, I'd throw the foul in. If I can take one of these beasts out completely, let alone two, I would definitely be fouled. Yeah, then he's out of bench and you can uh, go up men's. Yeah. And, yeah, the, 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 the way the fan favourite is, is if you play 30 games with a team and that player survives 30 games, you get it the next season. So, there you go. Apparently... Gusty one with Nurgle a couple of seasons. Yeah, he did. Um, but I think it's Ratacamper, I don't know, one of his other names. It's, there's definitely nothing wrong with people having three names so they can concede 15 times a season, isn't there? That's absolutely fine. It's definitely the spirit of the <laughs> And the Pomme of Fields is hit. Wow. Kaz. Oh, we got one. Kaz. There we go. So now he, uh, with the KO, if it doesn't come back, he's still full. But needs one more off. And the KO, if it stayed out, could see him short. Massive gang foul incoming. Yeah, I think this has to be, doesn't it? Doesn't Max run up? Yeah. Doesn't deserve a Kaz. Well, and didn't he go for the wrong beast? No. Because. Oh, the same. Oh yeah, they are the same. Sorry, I was reading the um, the guard is on the other beast, but it wasn't. It was on one of his. Uh, well, you know, he got a removal there, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point, Jim, but again, it is an overtime format. These could turn in the long term. Yeah. But I really hate his strategy, inducement strategy, because, just because he's not that rowdy, is he? If he was rowdier, this would make more sense. Yes. Wouldn't it? You know, just trying to win the fight. But he might need the help to score. I would have really liked the wizard to help, you know, bust out a score. Yeah. Didn't have the rowdy playstyle to go with the rowdy inducements. Yeah, but it gives you both. It gives you either the wizard to nail your score or the wizard to stop their score. I mean, it's yeah. it's such a versatile tool. And as I said, every turn until it's used, yeah. it's a tool of psychological terror as well. Yeah, but even if your whole plan was to, you know, just give up your, your defensive drive from the start, you know, you could have just backlined it like bloody, uh, yeah. you know, whatever he was in on Fumble, you know, that, that guy. You could have just had no effort to defend whatsoever. That could have been yeah. your whole plan. And you could have still had a wizard just for your own drive, because why not? Or just fireball for attrition fireball, all sorts of things. Or even for overtime, if he makes it to 1-1. One, one. Yeah, anything. It just seems crazy to not have a wizard. Crazy! Just in passing, Volcajo, you do know I'm not kidding when I say that I play goblins partly because I know it will reduce my win rate and make me less frightening. <laughs> I, I don't understand these people that go, oh, look at my 82%. I, I must get a second account to play stunties with, so it doesn't hurt that. <laughs> what, a load, what a load of shite. <laughs> I was happy as a, a new player to Blue Bowl in Blue Bowl 2 that my roommate went up gradually. But that's yeah. about it. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't understand. And yes, the idea of being able to concede. I mean, there are admins who, admins who have three accounts. And when asked, it's so that they can concede more than five times. Well, brilliant. <laughs> well done policing the system you've created. That's you're obviously brilliant at it. <laughs> so now we're going in. Blitzing a wrestler gets the pal. We just might blow, no claw. Doesn't need claw. And with that removal on turn 8, Mankis has got a DP on the OS. Yeah. So it has paid off a little bit. Yeah, Ziggy, I mean, the downside, and I think it's one of the problems with BB2, is because they just put raw win rate in, rather than putting any form of ELO or degradation system in, it, it is quite hard if you've already played, say, 5,000 games, to pick that up. 
Yeah. Um, which is just, it's a, you know, it's a bad statistic. That was a bad block, wasn't it? Blocking that direction. I guess he gave him the free dice to ease. But couldn't you have done the other one first and then it was a diagonal block so you could have got more hits afterwards? Yes. Doesn't power one? Maybe? No, these are some strange choices at times, but... This is looking rough. I mean, I don't play my Chaos, the Chaos team I have, the way other people do, so I guess I'm perhaps not as experienced at just bang all men's as other people are. But... No one bangs as many men's as me, PC. <laughs> no, I don't like this very much. <laughs> You're not fussy, are you? If there's a man there, you'll bang on him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any race. A couple of clubs down in London, I think you'd <laughs> love. <laughs> oh, we just KO the push jump with a foul. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's well, we knew the fouls were coming. That's not a bad place to foul. Yeah. It's only one assist, but that's why we kept the dirty player dry, is for the plus one on the injury, isn't it? Yep. Um, so, really, I don't think Mankis can uh, grumble that that worked. That, that we knew that was incoming. <laughs> it's one of the reasons he's he's kept this really tight shape. Oh. Like, uh, oh. That extra reroll helps. Mankis yeah. though, look at this positional blitz. He's all about the balls. That's nice. I mean, that reminds me of something I'd have done, so it's confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at the field. Uh, and that's, yeah, ooh, that's a nice position for that beastman. It's even rowdier. I'd have pushed one up the edge like the claw pommer's doing. But the one coming infield is, is in a lovely position to really <laughs> mess up where this ball carrier wants to come to. And almost certainly means that's the one that he's going to have to hit. Yeah. Which is fine. That's the piece you want being hit. Yes. Yeah, it's all about that, isn't it? It's, yeah. the, the Chaos Mirrors is all about, uh, you know, encouraging your opponent to hit the players that you want to be hit. Absolutely. Than, Absolutely. And discouraging from hitting the ones that you don't want to be hit. And of course, I mean, looking at, looking at it from that perspective, if that Beastman does get hit, then there's this little pack of three now. The Stand Firm Beast, the Claw Pommer, and now Chaos four. Warrior, now joined by, you know, okay, now there's too many. <laughs> now there's an entire team over on this side completely out of the way of the other team <laughs> and that's too many <laughs> I don't, don't understand now we're just running away it's it was looking so well and then... <laughs> I, I liked it until from three we went to seven and I thought that's probably too many yeah, he can, and he can he can reconnect quite easily now, can't he? Yeah, I mean, because now there's no pressure in front of this line of scrimmage. Now he's only got to worry about the side. So this side is now not going to be able to throw any surprises because it's going to be solidly defended against. Yeah, exactly. And whilst I'm that sure. beast is in a nice position, the ball can still just advance and not worry about him if it really wants to. It could. That'd be a little bit risky and not worry about him. It, it kind of would, yeah. The ball carrier is terrible, isn't he? Yeah, he's also got uh, a niggle. He's got a niggle, which again, thank him up it because of the client we can't see. But but he's a ball carrier, so you don't want him to be hit that's anyway. A, so. That's a very, very saucy little go for it. He just threw in yeah, there. Yeah, that saves him blitzing a shitter, doesn't it? Yeah, but a one in thirty-six there loses the game. And if yeah. you're putting that piece there afterwards, <laughs> I mean, I suppose it was exactly on the line he wanted to be on, but you could certainly have moved that guard beast there yeah. in case the go for it failed, and that yeah, Chaos Warrior. <laughs> and then yeah. you'd only have the back corner, which the wrestler's occupying, that, you know, your route in. We to close. Firm. Once you get there, and if it failed, you had two players right next to where Greed. the ball dropped. I... Greed. Bad oh. turn ordering, Jim. Really bad. Greed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here it comes. <laughs> There's one stand, no, two stand firms. And, and now again, with the ball safe, we can dodge off this claw pump. We don't have to stay there, this claw mighty. Yeah, but we are staying there. Down. One assist foul on the DP. Two assist yeah. foul. Two assist foul. Oh, it's leaving this guy open to hit the ball. Oh, that's that's oh, that's terrible. Yeah, that that's shocking. That's this. What are we? <laughs> we needed to get this dodge to work first. Yeah, if the if we'd got a pal with the blitz, 
that would have been four assists, and I wouldn't have hated it as much as I hate it now. <laughs> he didn't even move him on the GFI! Or at least move up there! What the fuck is yeah, he doing? Yeah, at least move up one up. What the fuck is he doing? <laughs> or two, because even if it fails the second one, it's in a spot that is useful <laughs> and forces him to blitz via a guard. It, it just... <laughs> one, two, one, two... I mean, I'm still probably going for the four plus three plus two die, aren't you? No, just claw pom. Claw pom is claw. <laughs> just claw pom some men. <laughs> you forgot this is a Chaos Mirror PC. Yeah, sorry. I'm still just banging on some men's and hoping to kill his team, aren't you, Jim? Yeah, that's what it's all yeah. about, man. There you go. That's what it's all about. If this goes to overtime, we win the toss, we're all good. We've banged men. <laughs> yeah. He's freed his uh, beastman now with a chain. No, it was nice. It's a nice angle for that. Now he's got to run got... everybody back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this weird massive over move to the right hand flank. They can't even like turn the corner. They just have to run backwards. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they're not going to be relevant next turn either. They struggle to get relevant the turn after that. Yeah. Oh, and, and because of that, that's why I like the four three two two to to hit the ball. Because if you pop the ball, then all of these guys are relevant, aren't they? Instead of just having yeah. to run back like dickheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. But um, you'd probably still have to move two or three of those guys first, or else you're seeding the drive if the four plus three plus fails. Yeah. Because remember, there's two two pluses after that, and then a two die, which is only 55%. Oh, yeah. And the niggling injury could. Um, come we're not all Rick Gregg, but, you know. And no ball carry. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one Zartak, yeah. No, well, we're not calling anyone shit, there's obviously... This is... Gestionador has won, has won CCL before, Mandikas has got the final and has done well in Blitzpit and everything. Got the... It is a two very, very, and very and good double. So, yeah, it's just... It's just, you know... Claw palm is the equivalent of brainworms. <laughs> Plus, here at Harrow the Hard, I personally, when I do chalice casts, I hold the players to a higher standard than I would a standard CCL game. Yeah. Uh, certainly, if I'm reviewing a replay like Jim did earlier, then I'm all about how do you help this person, not all oh, that shit wrong. I mean, what yeah. are they going to learn from that? Um, it, unless it was shit and wrong, in which case you should say so. Can we stand some players? But considering these are two of the, you know, the finest exponents of Blood Bowl Two, they've they've both, you know, been to serious stages of the Chalice multiple times. These are some really good quality teams. Some of the coaching's been top quality. Some's been a little iffy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I agree with Jim. You know, it's claw palms a really powerful tool, but it's sometimes bewitchingly powerful and people get just a bit too addicted to it yeah. Aha, the ball is based oh what yeah that turn that? yeah oh sorry yeah Elt was just saying that yeah yeah that's it um it was the it was the goat man shit and not, not the real human man <laughs> yeah it literally wasn't that's it no you don't wouldn't obviously wouldn't call someone a shit that was just Elt being a dickhead which i would call Elp a dickhead <laughs> Elp, i'm not saying i could help these two guys although Personally, I you know I, have, I don't watch all the vods of games I play because he's got the time. Plus, I've lived that life. But there's, you know, sometimes I will, and you can learn from any comment. Doesn't necessarily mean they're right, but just you know, listening to it, thinking about it, and either defending your own corner and saying, "No, here's why that's wrong," or "Okay, that's interesting. You might have a point." Yeah. We should none of us stop learning, no matter how good we think we are. There's always more to learn. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I say I'm not any good at Blood Bowl is I still feel I'm learning the game. It's the reason why I like playing so many races, I can learn so many different things. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And as someone with 20 years of experience in the training world, yes, I think sometimes I can help people, depending on what they want as help. I've had some people ask me for coaching that really just want to, to show off and get some affirmation. Um, give them a bit of that if they're willing to. It's a bit of a waste of your time when they're, they're like that, but... <laughs> Sometimes just another view, even if it's not, you know, massively informed, can be really useful. It depends yeah. how you learn. This is a risky, uh, risky formation, isn't it? Here, 
Uh, Dimmy G, uh, I am a member of the UK version of the Film Actors Guild. I'm also a member of the American Screen Actors Guild, and I have an equity card. I'm a member of the Equity Actors Union in the UK. Hmm. This is just Dimmy being a dickhead, by the way. Yeah, I know. He wants me to say that I'm a fag. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, Team America World Police, wasn't it? Team America World Police. <laughs> the Film Actors Guild. <laughs> Yes, it's actually called the Screen Actors Guild in America, and, uh, and in Britain we have one. I think it's also called the British Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> but yeah, I knew I knew what he really meant, which was he's yeah. inquiring about my my professional life. Um, so again, I this is there is a reason why we didn't sort of move forward? <laughs> Just kind of hanging about is it that? was risky as fuck wasn't it it was just crazy you, you had to power stand firm guy to, to get a 2D which with without block and then he didn't and so he had the 1D without block and he could have even shored that up but didn't because he, he put the dirty player covering a corner where no one can really get to instead of shoring that up and it's just horrible and he's going to lose <laughs> yeah yeah that uh, Mank is though not trying that hard to win um, you can't have failed to notice that his claw pommer and his uh, ball carrier have just sort of run away a bit and decided yeah. they'll see what happens later in the drive. Yeah, he doesn't even need them to win, does he? No, it would seem not. And uh, I think this is about chalice equity, isn't it? Yes, a little bit, yeah. You almost got a ball there. Five, you needed a six. Oh, God. And again. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous! <laughs> they were exactly where they were meant to be, <laughs> PC. <laughs> That's fucking disgusting, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. If the beastman wasn't minus movement, he could reach that ball. Yeah. He needs a GFO. Yeah. That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, it, it, it's so. I mean, I kind of think I know it's a random one in eight, but if you hit from the rear and knock into them. Shouldn't there be a slightly greater chance that the ball uses that momentum and heads in the direction the blitz came? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No, that's another dice roll. We need more dice rolls in the game. I mean, perhaps a fifty percent that it uses a, you know, the one, the the uh, ball and chain template. Yeah. To head exactly in the direction away from where the blitz what? is, and the what? other fifty percent is a standard D eight. That would make a bit more sense to me. But yes, it's it's overcomplicating. Well, there we are. All gone. Game done. Why do you not two dice the man? It's only a one D because he's got a card there. Mm. I will smash into things from the rear all day long, humorous Jim. He could have still one D though. One D's. He's still two boots. He's got four. I am a backdoor man. <laughs> As that's the great John Lee Hooker once sang. <laughs> but you know, that's an eight or nine pickup, and then a two plus with dodge. So like, it's. I guess the two plus with dodge is the same as doing the one D first, isn't it? So, I guess he should have absolutely done the 1D. Because failing that 1D is better than double wanting the dodge. Yeah. Afterwards. Or even failing the pickup and it's going back up the field. Um, I don't know, I think that's less of a concern. Because I... you could have failed it anyway, right? You could have double wanted it anyway. Also, I think Gustinador is in such a terrible position that if the ball did go straight back into the hands of someone, I think it probably wouldn't help that much. Yeah. But I think you should have done the 1D first. Yeah. But now we're in a very, very strong position, aren't we? This ball is... I mean, it's hittable, but it's red dice to get there. Yeah. No, it isn't. I'm telling a huge lie. You can just... Uh, you can chain someone onto it. The problem is getting that to be anything other than horrible, horrible red dice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You against a bodge piece. So, good luck with that. I guess you could 4 plus 3 plus with this guard, but that's still horrible. And it's a bludge, so you need a bow. No, you've got enough pieces up. You can chain the rookie onto the ball, but he's got two negatives on him. Um, then you can blitz the claw pommer to create some pluses around the other side they yeah. can at least get him a one die if not two yeah. or you can just bang on some men's you know that's good too some fun chaos <laughs> help me oh, dear. Uh, 
Yeah, well, how are they hard? At the end of the day, getting a getting a refund, getting a Steam refund isn't the worst outcome from buying Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> uh, tell him if he feels he needs to learn the game. Um, but there's a lovely website called Fumble, which is completely free. And on there, there's a, a group called the 145, where we teach, train, and help new players to Blood Bowl get to grips with the game. Uh, and if it's approving is what they're trying to do, we try and help them do that. Yeah. Or don't, and then come there yourself and be able to beat him forever. <laughs> <laughs> this is what? all horrible. Yeah, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I think he just lost. He's I like... can see. I can see why what? art is the way he is now. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is. And let me restate this. These are two very high-quality Blood Bowl 2 coaches, some of the best Blood Bowl 2 has. Both been into, you know, the late stages of multiple chalices. <laughs> this is Blood Bowl in Blood Bowl 2 at its pinnacle. <laughs> I know you've said Blood Bowl 2 about 400 times more than you've ever said Blood Bowl 2. <laughs> what? I'm just, I, I, I don't know what you mean, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you implying I'm saying this is merely a Blood Bowl 2 issue and that in other forms of Blood Bowl people play better? Yeah. The, I, I haven't said that. No, you didn't <laughs> say it. No, no, you didn't, you didn't need no, to. You never said that. <laughs> you didn't need to. But I'm sure we could find, a, a, you know, some kind of fumble tournament where someone did something horrible or, you know. Oh, um, uh, yes, you definitely can. Uh, look, and, you know, Mankiz has played this pretty solidly, I think, mostly. Yeah. We didn't like some of what he did at the end of his drive, but it, it got there mainly because Gustionador decided to just ignore him and try and hit some people. Yeah, he left it a bit late. But... Yeah. Yeah, I think it would have been really interesting have... if Gustionador I... hadn't moved that guard beastman, wouldn't it? That would have been really interesting to see what Mankiz would have done, but instead he rolled out the red carpet basically. <laughs> <laughs> and that weird move of Mankiz is of the team all to the right. Um, I felt was more exploitable than uh, Gustionador chose to exploit it, but that's because I'm always interested in sort of moving the ball, you know, in the position of the players, trying to win the game, and perhaps not as focused I should be on just banging men out. I think you've complained about that for like a lot of dwarf coaches who just stay back and like, oh, you've left it to the last minute. What are you going to do now? I don't particularly love that Muppet as a strategy, no. Yeah. And I mean, who am I, who am I to criticise? Because this has worked very well. Mankiz has uh, has not taken any damage, has he? That I can remember. No, nothing, nothing serious. Nothing that he cares about. There's a. It's just a no one term and some KOs. Yeah, badly hurt. Yeah. yeah, badly hurt. Three KOs. So it's you know it's been nice and safe as well, hasn't he? He hasn't put too much at risk. Yeah. And yet it's been easily enough. He's uh, he's mastered Gustav Gustionador this this game. I haven't uh, sick as eggs, but it, I, I'm sure it's not going to surprise me. I mean, I know Singolo and how he coaches. It was a game. Really, Dio? Okay, so that's going to start from the next one, or? <laughs> I just told you that decision now. That wouldn't surprise me. That's... <laughs> Nah, nah, leak BB. Because it's all, you know, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's fucking stupid, right? Because tabletop involves all of the people who only play at a games workshop or play in leagues with their buddies and stuff. And if you go to any, any decently sized tabletop tournament, okay, there'll be PC there and there'll be Malmia there and there'll be you know, Pete W and Purple Goo there, but there'll also be 200 people who are worse than 90% of CCL. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, I, I think that's not that's not unfair. Um, yeah. But the problem is with that, Jim, that because it's always Swiss, you know, you need to get lucky and draw one of those people in the first couple of rounds and not say Purple Goo. Yes. And then by round three, you're not likely to see them. They're down the other end of the room. Yeah. And you're playing the people that, you know, have seen Blood Bowl before, and yeah. that can count past five without uh, taking their socks off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help me, look, it, Blood Bowl is all one. I, I'm 
joking when I joke about Blood Bowl 2. I do think the standard on Fumble in the main is slightly higher on average. Just because it's a site that people tend to find if they really want to play Blood Bowl. It's yeah. not just a computer game you can pick up casually and start playing. So I think that's probably why that's the case. But it's all the same game. And I, I, I'm not really interested in hierarchies. Um, but yes, I think the way you laid it out, that probably Fumble has slightly, on average, better coaching than Blood Bowl 2. Blood Bowl 2 PC has slightly better, probably, from what I've heard, than PlayStation. Oh, PlayStation probably better. has slightly better quality than Xbox. <laughs> vastly better. <laughs> And play by email, it amazes me those people can not harm themselves on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Gashton Adore is just giving up now, so... Yeah, absolutely help me. That's, I think that's the real cause of it. I'm not saying it's, you know, I, I'm not trying to be tribalistic about it, I'm just trying to be analytical about it. Yeah. And also entertaining at the same time, because I think casting shouldn't just be, oh look, now they move the Chaos Warrior and hit. Because that's not interesting. Is it? God, I love that in the world. The World Cup, the official World Cup commentary was like, "Oh, he's rolled a four. He's rolled a two there. <laughs> he's going to use the team reroll. Oh, he's rolled a one. He's fumbled it. It's got a six on the scatter." There's like literally was the commentary it was like, "What the fuck is the point of this?" And now for the blind, I will explain what you can see. <laughs> yeah. No, it's your job to be amusing and to add context and anecdotes and stories and different plans for you to consider I think that's the job of this sort of thing isn't it? <laughs> yeah. as well as just have a laugh and make sure that Jim doesn't actually have to have a play block <laughs> what's he doing there? just run over it just, yeah why not let's take on a quick blitz never know you might get lucky we've got horns mm. might bang some men you know yeah we don't need an assist not a piece we massively care about. He is going to call upon him though, to teach him a good lesson. Well, it's yeah. It's also saying just claw upon this piece rather than you know. I mean, although there wasn't anything he could have got to otherwise, wasn't there? Mm. So, oh come on, pile on! So he's, no, you've he's, got to pile on that. Cause it just doesn't yeah. matter. So he's he's, he's ended the yeah, game. Exactly. He's ended the game without yeah, using any apples and without yeah. using any bribes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice and pretty much buddy. we started with most of his team over a move away from all of the opponents' team. <laughs> the babes did a thing though. The babes did. Yeah, but I don't know if the second one made any difference. Like, I know it came back in a two, but they might have come back in a three anyway, might not. Are you suggesting, Jim, that perhaps some other inducements, like, for example, uh, a wizard, might have been more useful? I think it may have been, yeah. Crazy opinion you've got there. Well, who's to say if you're right or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a level on the MVP. Oh, wow, yeah. It's Jamie's. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie's. Dead. <laughs> the team is, well, it's yeah. not. Jim, he can go and play in the he open. Can go, uh, play in open, have some fun with his fan favorite. He can, he can. Um, so yeah, you know, look, and it's it obviously been a little bit harsh to get the door there, and he has won CCL before, you know. But uh, he, I didn't like his choice of inducements, but uh, and especially not with the team that he had. Like, if the team that he had was just more like, you know, an idiotic claw, uh, mighty blow first team, so he actually had a really rowdy team. They right. might have paid off more, but yeah. he, his team wasn't that rowdy, and I feel like if he'd used, you know, like he really didn't nearly stop Mancus' store, didn't he, in the first half? And, you know, I think he should have, he should have definitely got the wizard. I think it, it's like someone doing stuff. two different half of two different plans, like going rowdy with inducements, but not rowdy with the team. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I kind of expected a question, another question I tend to ask myself, it's not always useful, but am I the orc or am I the elf in this matchup? And sometimes even as, say, Dwarves or Chaos, you're the elf. The other team is hittier, it's stronger, it's got better skills, and you're going to have to be careful about it. And I don't feel that happened this time. I think both of them thought, well, I'm the Chaos. Yeah. And then when he was actually on the pitch, Gustiano Dor seemed to have a look at the other team and go, oh, God, I'm the elf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then when he got pitch invasion, he's like, oh, God, I can't move. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I felt better pre-game strategy and a better pre-game thinking as to what tactics would work would have really helped him yeah. and I agree a wizard <laughs> a wizard would have really helped yeah. always a wizard and on that bombshell thank you well first of all congratulations Mankiz commiserations Absolutely. Gestionador
thank you very much, Purple Chest. Sure. And thank you very much, Muppet Pac-Man. And thank yeah, you for no watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic. <laughs>